you can't click it. There, good. So I'm going to go to slides and uh, go through the lecture. Why do we use version control? Because that might be a question that you have asked yourself. Why do we actually want to use it? So first, what is version control? Well, this is Wiki from Wikipedia. In software engineering, version control, known as revision control as well, source control or source code management, is a class of systems responsible for managing changes to computer programs, documents, large websites, or other collections of information. So it's a way of making sure that uh, you can easily manage the changes to your documents without re overwriting something you already had, something your teammate did, et cetera, et cetera. So it's responsible for managing changes. So in an ideal world, things develop linearly. Each new version is an improvement of the previous one. There's no need to backtrack. Everyone knows what everyone else is doing. And at the end, we have just finished everything. Everything is improving. That's not how it works. Things develop non-linearly. A new version can be anything between a complete catastrophe and a major breakthrough. And you don't know what other people are doing. That is very common when you're working together in a team. Someone got a great idea, they are working on implementing it, and you don't know that they are working on it. So maybe you're doing something similar or working on the same file. So very often we simply fix what earlier mistakes we have made. So it will often be easier to just go back to an earlier version if you have made some large mistakes on Tuesday, you just go back next day to what you had done on Monday instead of trying to fix what you made. So it's often nice just start fresh. But the more often you make commits, the more likely it is that you don't have to backtrack all of it. So it's good to make commits fairly often instead of only doing it once every day. It, of course, depends on how much you do each day on some project. So often you will have the question, where is this earlier version you had? Can I use control Z to go back inside my file? Can I find the file I changed? What did I name it? I at least have a tendency to create lots of temporary files in my directory if I don't use version control. If I am organized, maybe I create one for each day, a directory where I make changes. That's unlikely to work, but I might. Or maybe I do backup each day. But many ways I could attempt to manage these changes myself. And what then if I'm working together with someone? They don't have access to my files. So it's prone to mistakes. Controlled set has limits. You can have overwritten files, deleted files, there could be errors. What should I save? Should I just copy everything every day? How much space does that take? Or should I just copy individual files? How do I organize the version? And what's the difference between the version? It's very difficult to manage. And that is why you are using uh, um, version control instead. So what about the granularity also? As you can see, I mean, on Monday, you made improvement to one part, mistakes to another part, and improvements to the next one. And next day, again, you try, you correct on one of them, mistake on another one, and so on and so forth. It's difficult to keep an eye on. It just gets worse and worse the bigger it is. How does version control system solve this? Well, it stores the history using snapshots, and we call them commits in uh, Git and in many other places. Each snapshot represents the project at a given point in time. And it also manages these snapshots or commits and the associated metadata 
and we will talk about that later in the course. We can name it with tags, but the pro, uh, version control system does that as well, but we can give it tags ourselves also. There will be comments, dates, authors, etc., for us to keep an eye on and use if we want to see where the change actually was done and what we could go back to if we needed to do that. It is quite easy to move between different snapshots and it can handle different degrees of granularity. It can also handle multiple development paths and branches. So maybe you and your coworkers each create a branch and then you merge them as uh, you each get the part that you are working on done. It makes it easy to compare different snapshots, version control systems. There will be named revisions, comments, time information, and author information. There are diff tools, search tools, and bisection search to find what you are looking for. It also allows joining and merging of different snapshots, different commits. And it's easy to experiment with IDs. It's very good for collaboration, and that is one of the primary functions uh, that version control systems was made. The usual setup is you have a server, usually remote, and multiple clients. People then work locally and send or push the changes to the server. And the version control system then keeps track of what has been done and by whom. And this is quite a lot safer since mistakes can be easily remedied and you can merge the contribution of several people. It, ha it functions as a backup directly. It can, uh, maintains a copy of each file locally, and usually it only keeps the changes of the file. And globally, lost files can be recovered from the server. So version control systems such as Git has been integrated with several services, PackMD, Overleaf that you may have heard of, and also many others. Services such as GitHub can do almost anything for you. It can store history, distribute test, continuous integration, bug reports, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and it can also be used to set up a website for your project, such as what we are currently working on doing for this course. So to sum up, version control systems keeps tracks of your file and other output. It tracks what is created and modified. It tracks who made the modifications. It tracks why the modifications were made. And that, of course, requires you to make good commit comments. You need to write what it was you changed and things like this. So you can easily when you go through the history, see where it was you introduced this change that you may want to work on again or something. So practical use cases. What are practical use cases for version control systems? Well, a common one is source code. And many version control systems are designed for managing source code, for managing deployment, like production, development, testing, etc. You can make branches for each new feature, for instance. You can manage published version. You can manage or exper experimental features, for instance, by creating branches. It's good for bug hunting, but it's not just for source code. It's also very good for writers, artists, composers. It can be used for many things. For instance, it could be used for LaTeX files, which if you're tracking your manuscript, which version has been submitted, revised, accepted, and things like this. And it's very good if you collaborate in a group. It can be used for batch files and data if you are submitting something in the SPC system. You can track different versions of the batch script so you can check the used configuration afterwards. You can track your input and output files, though it's limited to smallish files. <clears throat> so examples of version control systems. 
That was the very first one, SCCS, created in 1972 at Bell Labs. It only worked for Unix, and it was only work, working with source code files. Then came RCS, Revision Control System, in July 1985. It was usually superseded by other systems such as CVS, and that began as a wrapper on top of RCS. CVS centralized version control system is actually still in use some places. Uh, so that is still used. There was a release in July 1986 based on RCS. It expands by adding support for repository level change tracking and for client server model. Apache's uh, subversion SVN is also still used. It's from 2004 and it was meant to replace CVS. <clears throat> BitKeeper, initial release May 2000, that introduced distributed version control and was briefly used for developing the Linux kernel. Problem, it's proprietary. It's also no longer maintained. Then comes Git in 2005, in April. It was started by Linus Torvalds. It was originally uh, made for developing the Linux kernel. It has distributed version control and it's open source, which is very nice. There will be more developments on it, of course. So.